So welcome everybody. I am Sandra Amer and I'm your local TechSoup Connect host, uh, which is a program of TechSoup. TechSoup Connect is a global network of tech for good meetups and we're all over the world and it's a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits get, implement and use technology effectively. Uh, TechSoup Connect. A little bit about me. I've been hosting uh, these types of events and webinars for the Ontario chapter of TechSoup Connect for about just over two years now. I started just as the pandemic hit, so I didn't get to do any in-person events, but maybe one of these days that'll change. I work in technology, I work full-time, and I also on the side do consulting for small businesses and nonprofits, and as well as a whole bunch of training. I am also the national, currently the national president for the One Parent Families Association. So I understand the difficulties of working uh, as a nonprofit and getting tech to work for you. A little bit about our community values. If you haven't been here before, we welcome everybody and we put our community first. We're here to support each other in order to build stronger nonprofits. And technology is one of the tools we use to help you build stronger nonprofits. We're happy to invite participation. We all have something to learn from each other. And obviously it should go without saying we treat each other with kindness and respect. A little bit more about what TechSoup can help you with. TechSoup can connect you with a whole bunch of uh, different donated and discounted products. Uh, these are just some of the examples and some more examples of what you can get through TechSoup. And this is an example of just how much you could save by going through TechSoup as opposed to purchasing these items individually through the retail channel. If you need additional tech help, feel free to check out the forums on techsoup.org. They're a great resource where you can share information and get an the questions answered on a whole uh, host of technology related topics. As I mentioned, if you are interested in hosting an event like this, as we're moving into kind of live things, if you're in the Toronto area, which is where I am, if you have any venues that maybe we could use for an in-person meeting, I'm open to uh, starting to have conversations like that as well. There is one more event happening on June 22nd, all about digital transformation. And it, it's going to be a really interesting topic. So keep an eye on your email for that. If you haven't already, it is posted on our Ontario chapter event page at events.techsoup. And with that, I will stop sharing and hand it over to our guest of honor today, who we've uh, already learned so much from this year. We've had you here a few times now, Omer, but I will let you take it away and tell us a little bit about you and teach us about you and exciting things. And hello everyone. It's really my pleasure to be here with you today. And I'm really passionate to share my understanding about the digital social enterprise. So my name is Daniel Omer. I'm a part-time professor at University of Ottawa and Royal Military College. And I'm also the founder and executive director of two companies, Vectors Group and Vectors Institute, both focusing on the needs of nonprofit organizations. So uh, they are both social enterprises. They are registered business, but uh, uh, they function as a social enterprise because it's also our passion to support nonprofit organizations and charities. And today I'm going to talk about social enterprise, digital social enterprise. I know you have heard about social enterprise, but today I want to highlight the advantages of digital social enterprise and give you some practical tools that you can use to develop your business plan for a digital social enterprise. If you have any questions, uh, please jump in. It's not a, a big group, so uh, feel free to jump in and ask your questions. Or if you have any comments, please feel free to join. I may not be able to see the chat box messages. Uh, Sandra, I will appreciate if you can help me with that. But I'm switching to my presentation now, and I will not have access to the chat box or limited access. Okay. So digital social enterprise. The big question is why do we need this digital social enterprise? We are a charity. We are a nonprofit organization. Enterprise is for businesses. Why do we need it? And the answer is simple, actually, to create some additional funding resources for your nonprofit organization. And even when you are in good stage, good, good positions in terms of funding, social enterprise can still be a good, good option for your sustainability 
and uh, to mitigate risks in the future. As there are different options, donors, corporate sponsors, crowdfunding, grants, events, and traditional uh, fundraising channels, and digital social enterprise is one of the newest ones, relatively newest ones. And today I'm going to focus more on digital social enterprise, but some of the content is definitely related to social enterprise. And I will briefly explain why digital social enterprise is more promising than a classical social enterprise. The first reason, and this is basically the summary of the following couple of slides. The first reason is this is a growing market. And I'm going to show you some numbers, which will definitely convince you that this is a big opportunity. And the second reason is the government support. You might have seen some government grant opportunities, and you will see more grant opportunities in the near future that encourage nonprofit organizations and charities to have their own social enterprise. To be more specific, so the Canadian government announced Social Finance Fund, which is in total $755 million. So this is the money for nonprofit organizations and, and charities to establish to or to grow capacity, to develop capacity in social finance market. So the term social finance market is too generic, but it basically means there will be funds to support your social enterprise investments. And one of the practical impl implementations of the social finance fund is uh, investment readiness fund. So they, they open this fund a couple of times a year. And it looks like they will continue to offer this fund until the end of 2023 and with potential extension to, um, to further years. But now they started with $50 million program to help nonprofit organizations to build capacity. So investment readiness means that this is a term for businesses, not for nonprofit organizations. It used to be. But the world is changing. Now, nonprofit organizations and charities, they also need to be investment ready. So investment ready means people will make donations to you. Corporate sponsors will fund your cause. They, they will put money. You can even do some joint business together. This is not just for business. It's also for good. But it's literally the same thing. Convincing the funders and the investors that you are the right organization for them to. So the government has a clear and highlighted interest in funding social enterprise ideas. And now the first word, digitalization. So digitalization is creating a second economy that is vast, automatic, and invisible. In our daily life, you, I'm sure almost all of us use digital, channels uh, very commonly. So not only we use the social media or internet or Netflix or other digital products, but we also use it to purchase our needs. And more and more people use internet as their primary source of procurement or purchase. So thereby bringing about the greatest societal of people since the industrial revolution. And this is not a promise only for the businesses or the government. It's also an opportunity for the nonprofit organizations. And I'm going to show you some numbers to convince you that it's a promising opportunity. Now, those are the e-commerce sales by country as of 2021. I don't have 2022, but you can imagine that the numbers will just increase. And if you look at Canada, we spent over $44 billion for e-commerce. And when you have a digital social enterprise, you can literally sell products all around the world. You don't need to limit yourself to your country. You can literally target global markets. And another interesting statistics is about the growth of the e-commerce. So as you can see in North America, the growth rate, the annual growth rate is over 18. So this means every year we will use e-commerce or digital platforms more and more. And this also means we are, are going to use 
the classical traditional platforms less and less because the total amount of money is limited. And now it's shifting from traditional markets to digital market. And again, maybe it's a good time to remind her, this market is not just for businesses. Okay. So we know that nearly 1 million, 1 million businesses compete on e-commerce, maybe over 1 million now globally, but this is so big. This market is so big. There is also big room for nonprofit organizations and charities to start their own digital social enterprise, also to promote their charitable activities, but today's focus is business or social enterprise. So this is a big opportunity for nonprofits and charities to generate some additional funds through internet. And it's not only the businesses. When you look at the government index, OECD digital government index, I don't want to go into details, but I want you to notice that Canada is in the top six, okay? Canadian government. This means Canadian government prioritizes digitalization. So when government prioritizes digitalization, it also means that future grant opportunities will focus on digitalization. More and more grant opportunities will focus on digitalization. Digitalization is a broader topic, and I know you are familiar with it. But our focus today will be on digital social enterprise. But having a digital social enterprise will also make you ready for other digital opportunities. It will build a capacity that you can communicate with your funders and government and for future opportunities, for future digital opportunities. And so the solution, the the practical tool that I came up with is, uh, I, I like using abbreviations and then the abbreviation of the seven rules of thumbs, miracle, M-I-R-A-C-L-E, and I'm going to briefly explain what they mean. The first one is the mindset. Okay. And so I have been working with over uh, maybe nearly 200 nonprofit organizations and over 1,000 nonprofit professionals. They are amazing people. I love all of them. They are amazing people, but they don't have the business mindset, most of them. And they don't have to, right? Because this is not the nature of their work. They need to know how to help people, how to listen to people, how to understand their needs, and how to develop the solutions for the community. But the life has its own roots. So any nonprofit organization, if they want to survive, they need to comply with the rules of new world. And this new world requires sustainable funding structure. So social enterprise is even inevitable step for all nonprofit organizations. So nonprofit leaders, they need to adjust their mindset and maybe think like a business person in certain cases. The revenue of the digital social enterprise will go to the charity. That's, there is no, no question about this, but when you operate the social enterprise, you need to think like a business person. And this mindset also requires adjustment, alignment, and flexibility because rapidly changing market environments and technology related industries means that social enterprises must swiftly adjust to market challenges. So something that works today may not work next week. And this is the nature, right? So this is the nature of business world. You have to be flexible. You need to be dynamic to respond to the dynamically changing needs of the customers. And in digital markets, this is even much more difficult. But one big advantage nonprofit organizations and you have is you are closer to the people, you know what they need. You have supporters and imagine there are two sellers and one of them is, is owned by a charity and the other one owned by a global company. I would prefer the one that works for the charity, right? Because this way I can get the service or good that I want. In the meantime, I can also contribute to a charity. So if 
conditions are equal, if the price is equal, if the quality is equal, many people will prefer your digital social enterprise. So you have a bigger advantage when compared to the other businesses. As far as you can compete in terms of price, in terms of quality, and in terms of customer expectations. So the mindset, this is a big question. Okay. So I put those two pictures. One of them is a boat and the other one is a train. The train is a much safer platform, much safer vehicle because it, uh, it has this railroad and it has limited flexibility, but it is safe. But on the other hand, if you try to become a boat, then you literally have no limitations. You can go all around the world without following any predefined path. But of course, it's more risky. So there is a uh, saying, Einstein saying, I like this very much. It's a, he says, the safest place for boats is, are the harbors, right? So in the harbors, they are safe, but the boats are not designed to stay in the harbors. So the safest action for nonprofit organization or charity is to rely on government grants or individual donations and don't do anything else. But this strategy will not bring them anywhere. And this strategy will not ensure sustainability or growth. And with that, after the COVID, you must have noticed that many organizations struggle to find additional funding resources. And social enterprise seems like the, the best option and most sustainable option. Because if you have a profitable social enterprise, then you don't need to worry about grants. You don't need to worry about individual donations. You, and you have the flexibility to use that money as you, there are limitations about government grants or charitable uh, donations. But for social enterprise, your board and your, and you will have the flexibility you might enjoy. But this mindset, it's easy to say, of course, there are several questions who, when, where, how, why, what, and you can add more questions to that. And then when you look at the statistics, there are some scary numbers. 80% of the businesses fail in the first five years. And this ratio is even bigger, even higher in the social enterprises, because many social enterprises are operated by people who doesn't have the business background or business mindset. And they are, people try to operate them as a nonprofit and eventually they lose money and they fail. It's this number is also valid for any businesses, shall this prevent us from taking any further steps? No, it shall not, because there are also good numbers. And I want you to look at those numbers, okay? And, and the names. So in 2018, if you look at the top 10 companies in the world, Petro, PetroChina, Exxon, and none of them are, the, except Microsoft, uh, most of them are um, non-digital companies. But when you come to 2018, you can see the big change. Now the top 10 is occupied by digital companies or the funding or the financial resources for nonprofits are shifting from traditional markets to digital markets. And this is where you should be. This is where your strategies should target. So the next step, uh, the next letter in the minor Miracle is the idea. So what can you do? Okay, let's do, let's start a digital social enterprise, but what are my options? Is Amazon the only option to sell stuff? Is Shopify the only option you have? No, they may be good options, but you're not limited with them. There are different types of products or that you can offer. So just to give you an idea, like uh, you can offer free services and get earn money through other channels like advertisement or corporate sponsors, or you can offer on-demand services, subscriptions, peer-to-peer, e-commerce, freemium. So you start with a free version and then to get the premium version, you have to pay extra. There may be some open sources. Uh, so if you can generate some visibility, some, some action on a digital platform, then it has a value. This is something you can sell. 
you can use advertising or you can use some hidden revenue tactics. So I don't want to uh, spend too much time in details, but what I want to highlight here is there are so many endless options for your nonprofit organizations. You have to be creative and innovative, and you will see lots of business opportunities for your social enterprise. I want to share a couple of social digital social enterprises that I know. So Shop for Good is, a, is owned by a Canadian charity, Women Multicultural Resource and Counseling Center in Durham. And this is their platform. They recently launched it. It's similar to Etsy or Amazon. And uh, there are private vendors, but the private vendors are from underrepresented communities. Okay. So when you purchase something from this platform, certain percentage goes to the charity and, and, and the remaining part goes to someone who's in need. Okay. So this, this is a good feeling because this way you help one charity and one person in need at the same time while receiving your Another platform is online food bank. So we have over 3000 food banks in Canada and online food bank is the only digital version. Okay. So it's, a, it generates money. It's not free, but we all know that it's for a good reason. Another one is uh, Charified. This is a, a digital platform for nonprofit organizations to promote their services and they have a membership fee. So they are a service provider, just TechSoup, right? So TechSoup is a non-profit organization, but it generates some revenue. Not, and this is, this is a perfect example of digital social enterprise. So in terms of ideas, I also want to share some uh, additional uh, options. So websites, social media platforms, they're not the only options. Now there is another trending topic. Actually, it's already very popular and we all use it. The, applications instead of websites some companies focus on applications and if you look at the 2020 numbers or the past you can see the increase in number of applications and number of games so can a non-profit organization sell a game application yes why not so social enterprise is independent from the mandate of your non-profit organization you can open a factory, you can open a restaurant, you can develop a game application. It doesn't matter. As far as it doesn't conflict with your overall values, you can literally do any business to generate revenue for your nonprofit organization. Just, just like private sector, there's no... So just to give you an idea, okay, so what type of applications can you develop? Lifestyle mobile apps, so um, let's say if you are a religious organization, for example, you can, people can use your application to get, receive daily motivating messages or some, I don't know, they, they, you can develop applications for lifestyle, social media, mobile applications. Well, this is already a ma mature market. Uh, I don't think any nonprofit organization can compete with Facebook or LinkedIn or uh, uh, Twitter, but maybe in your local area, you can have a social media platform that, that can create some revenue for your organization. Utility mobile apps, it gives you the impression that everything that can be taught is already taught, right? So, but this is not true because we, when we look at numbers, we can see this increase in the growth of digital market, increase in the number of applications. This is a huge and your organization can be there too. Games, entertainment, mobile applications. So this is the most, the biggest market. And if you have the capacity, why not? This can be your market as well. Productivity, mobile apps, and news information outlets, mobile apps. I don't know. It may or may not be related to nonprofit sector where you can come up with, with a news application specifically for the nonprofit sector. Why not? Because do you know any application that focuses on nonprofit sector? I don't recall. Maybe there are, but I don't recall. Maybe they didn't do the marketing very well yet, but this can be a good opportunity. And if you start thinking in this area, 
I'm sure you will come up with much better ideas. So the, the next letter uh, in the solution is the idea. And I want you to look at those numbers, okay? So because numbers are convincing. So we, when you make a digital social enterprise decision, it has to be related to numbers. For your charity, it has to be related about the impact. But for social enterprise, it's all about profitability because if it doesn't generate revenue for your nonprofit organization, then there is no point to start a digital social enterprise. So we specifically need to focus on numbers. Seven, seven billion people worldwide are using mobile devices, okay? And uh, almost all of your clients, your beneficiaries, your donors, your sponsors, they use digital mobile devices. Mobile app downloads number is over 258 million. Okay? So this is a big number and you can be, you can get your share from this cake. And the total monetary value of this market is 157 mil billion. Every year, people spend $157 billion worldwide. Okay. And the next item, next letter is R. Okay. So next item is resources. And those are the resources you need to be, you need to make ready before you start your digital social enterprise, your finance, your HR, your physical space, information, stakeholders, and leadership. Okay. So you can start it. Literally, you can start a business in 15, 20 minutes in Canada officially, but what is next? You need a person to operate, to run the digital social enterprise. And it's um, starting a digital social enterprise without completing the resources is like a car with a missing tire. Okay. So you will absolutely fail if you have the finance, if you have the HR, but if you don't have the stakeholders, if you don't have the product, if you don't have the leadership that can guide, that can um, lead your digital social enterprise. So before you launch it, you, and this is important, okay? Because many organizations, they like the idea and it's like a bent wagon. They just, okay, we need to have a digital social enterprise and they start it. And after a couple of months, they fail because they don't, they, they are usually not prepared enough to launch their digital social enterprise. Okay. So resources, they must be ready before you launch it. And of course, after launch, your resources must be ready uh, and must be continued to be ready. This is the only way to make it. And the next stage is action. Okay. So where are you going to start? How are you going to operationalize your digital social enterprise? You start with the idea solution. So what is the need and what is your solution to it? Okay. It's like business investment. And then you do some research before you jump in. And this research can take a couple of weeks, can take a couple of months. And in some cases, it may even take a couple of years. So McDonald's, for example, when, when they first, before they opened their first store in Moscow, they spent six years for feasibility analysis. Okay. So some research, some preparation period may take longer, but in your case, I think you definitely spent like these couple of months to make sure that your idea is the right solution for the market. But this is not enough. Then you need to have a validation stage. Okay. Before you publicly announce it, you can try it in a smaller circle and then make some adjustments before you officially launch it. And when you launch it, you need to brand it. Okay. So shop for good. Have you heard about shop for good? This is because they didn't do branding and marketing enough. Okay. And when there are billions of web pages and there is no way for us to know all of them or find them. So they, you need to brand yourself and market your digital social enterprise. And the next stage is fund it. Okay. So even the social enterprises, they need some initial capital. They will not generate revenue the first day. It will take some time. And during this time, 
you need to fund your digital social enterprise. And once you have the fund, then you need your structure, your system, you form your teams, and then only after then you launch your digital social enterprise. And this is the action phase. So and th this is a model developed for business model development. Okay. So it's a theoretic, it's, it's an academic study or a practical tool that, that you can use to develop business models and business models is also a term originally developed for the business world. But now, since we are talking about social enterprise, we can use the same term and the tool in the nonprofit sector too. Okay. So let's say you decided to start your digital social enterprise. Where do you need to start? What are the questions that you need to answer? How can you be sure that you thought about everything you need to do? We made some ideas, like we need to think about finance. What are my products? I need to think about space, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to make sure that I don't miss any important detail. So Canva model, Canva's model is a practical model uh, and a good starting point. And I will, and it has nine areas that you need to, and four of them are about your cap capabilities and, and the, the others are related to, to the value created for your stakeholders. And those are important areas to answer. Now, so I gave an example here. This is about Wikipedia, which is a nonprofit organization. So the first section, first question, key partners. Who are your key partners? If you are in Ottawa, for example, Invest Ottawa should be your key partner. If you are in Ontario, provincial government should be your key partner or United Way should be your key partner. Who's your key partner? Because when you need support, you want to make sure that you have strong partners. Of course, when available, when you have them. But when you fill in this form, this canvas model, you will easily see whether you are ready or not. If you don't have key partners, then maybe it's not a good time to start your digital enterprise. Okay. And the second question is, what are the key activities? What do you offer? What do you want to do? You cannot just say, okay, I'm starting a social enterprise. You have to be very specific. I'm going to sell ice cream. So this is my key activity. I'm going to sell the best ice cream in Toronto. Okay. So um, you, it's up to you how you feel in this, but at least there has to be something that makes to make sense to everyone. And the next question, key resources. Okay. What are your strengths? So how, what are like your finance? I'm in a very critical position. We have 1000 volunteers. We have a social media account that is followed by 50,000 people. Wow. Those are key resources that you can put in this list just to give you the confidence that you need to take the next. And if you continue with the other sections, value proposition, what is the value proposition of Wikipedia? access high quality content, deliver your knowledge to many people. This is for Wikipedia. Okay. But for your organization, what is the value you offer? So in my example, the value of I offer is the most delicious ice cream in Toronto, right? So this is my value. And remember, we are talking about the social enterprise, not your charity, because the value that the charity offers is different than the value that your digital social enterprise will offer. Ice cream is okay for a business, but ice cream is not okay for a charity, right? So you need to separate your social enterprise and charity. This is really important because if you merge them, then you, you, your social enterprise has a high risk to fail, but it will also affect your nonprofit organization. And then customer relations or relationships. So how are you going to communicate with your customers? And you may even start from an earlier stage. Who are your customers? Okay. So who do you think will come to your website or who will download your application? You need to think about that too. And the customer segments, uh, well, this is uh, related to the previous question, but it makes sure 
it ensures that there is no gap in your business plan. You think of everything that matters for the success of your digital enterprise. So for Wikipedia, it is the mass market, but in your case, you can target youth or you can target uh, mothers, you can target uh, children. So you have to, but when you follow this guideline, it, it forces you to answer all questions and see the gaps if there are any. And the next one is the cost. Okay, and this is probably the most important component is business mindset. Many people, many entrepreneurs and many social entrepreneurs start with thinking about pro how much profit can I make? Oh my God, I'm going to make $1 million. But this is not the right point to start. You need to think about the cost because if you can save the cost, you can generate profit and increase your revenue. And the Scanland model just encourages you to think properly and follow the right steps. And then revenue steps. I think this is the biggest one. Where is the money? Where will you get the money? Because now we are, you don't, for your digital social enterprise, you don't have donors, you don't have government grants, you don't have grants, and you may not have corporate sponsors. So you need to answer this question. Where is the money? And if there is no answer, then it's not a good investment. It's not a good entrepreneurship. Now the next letter is C, continuity. Okay, you, you start your digital social enterprise and one week later, your board members wants you to report how much money you generated. And the answer is zero, right? So you cannot generate revenue in one week. It takes three years on average for a business to set up. And the social enterprises are not the exception. So you need to give three years for a social enterprise to fully become set up. Of course, after the first year, you may target a break even point, but first year you will, you might, you may definitely lose money, but to get the actual results, you definitely need to wait minimum three years. And so at early stages of your products, um, there will, you can expect a big increase, but we, you have to be realistic. There's a maturity level. And after this point, you cannot grow your business. And just like any other business, digital social enterprises also have it. And after a certain time, they are not feasible anymore. So you also need to have a exit strategy when the time comes. And this may not be an academic input, but uh, based on my former experience, I can definitely put this in my list. Luck is an important component. Too. Sometimes you do everything right, but you may not get the results and you may have some different explanations, but I call it luck. Estimated number of e-commerce sites, 12 million to 24 million in total. Okay. Less than 1 million of these sites sell more than 1,000 a year. So 1,000 or less is not a feasible entrepreneurship. It's not good for your digital social enterprise. So you try to be in the first 1 million out of 24 million investments. This seems like a scary percentage, but on the other hand, you have this capacity, you have the team, you have the support, and you are living in one of the best countries in the world in terms of opportunities for digital social enterprises. So, when, so you need to be aware that you may fail. There is no guarantee to succeed, but if you succeed, this is a perfect solution for funding of your nonprofit. And good business doing right things being professional and being institutionalized will increase your chances to succeed. And the last one is careful management of available resources. And we call it economy. But, uh, you can also use efficiency or effectiveness of your organization. So reducing the cost, optimizing the expenses, increasing the profitability, and doing the marketing and branding, and having the right product determining the right price, 
anything you can think of to make a business, a regular business to succeed are all applicable to digital social enterprises as well. So this is, so those are the seven steps of successful digital social enterprise. And this concludes my presentation here. And now I'm going to stop sharing and answer your questions or listen to your comments if you have. It was very informative. It's a, it's a lot like running, it is like running your own business. It's not just, it's a, and it's a bit of a different mindset for, from the nonprofit world where you're thinking about how you're going to do good for people. It, you really need to focus on the business act aspect to make it work. Absolutely. And there, there may be a misinterpretation or, um, oversimplification of uh, social enterprise idea. You may be a amazing leader, amazing nonprofit leader, but it doesn't mean that you will be able to operate a digital social enterprise as successfully as your nonprofit organization. It's, you may be a good pilot, but you may be a terrible captain. So those are different things. Yeah. A different skill set and a different approach, similar, but different, but yeah, exactly. I haven't seen any questions come through the chat. If anyone has any questions or wants to come off mute and ask them directly or discuss anything, we can. Perfect. I believe you're going to share the presentation as well. So if yep. anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or anybody in my team. We are a social enterprise too. We do a lot of pro bono uh, services uh, to nonprofit organizations. We will be happy to uh, support your cause as well. Thank you so much. It was great to have you here again. And uh, I guess with that, we'll sign off. And thank you everyone for joining us. Thanks. Have a good day.